we begin then? As you mentioned, the Karate Kid, Scott. Well, yes. I suppose, will I begin, given that yes. I, I will be introducing <laughs> it? Will I begin, Drew? Yes. Yes, I should. <laughs> Thank you, Drew. <laughs> uh, yeah, so. You sound like the turtle from The Never Ending Story. <laughs> Oh, that's oh, that's a nasty thing to say, you horrible man. You don't look like him. Just, like... <laughs> As you probably guess by now, first up we have 1984's The Karate Kid. Itself already the subject of a pretty poor remake, uh, in, in which, you know, they've moved the action to China, which is not where karate's from, but okay. Added Jackie Chan, probably a good thing. And then added in a tree in the form of Jaden Smith. <laughs> uh, but no, we're talking very much about the original here, which, now this will shock you is the tale of a kid who does karate. Where do they get these names? The titular karate kid is 15-year-old Daniel LaRusso, played by the then 22-year-old Ralph Macchio, though at least he has a gangliness more appropriate to a teenager that makes this less egregious than is often the case, hmm. who has recently moved from New Jersey to California to allow his mother to begin a new career. His first day goes well, as he meets a friendly neighbour of his age, and then meets the beautiful Ali, Elizabeth Shue, at a beach party. Things start to go rapidly downhill, though, after he gets on the wrong side of Ali's jealous ex-boyfriend Johnny, a young Boris Johnson, <laughs> and makes instant and mortal enemies of Johnny and his group of vicious karate black belts from the Cobra Kai dojo. The Cobra Kai is run by John Kreese, Cagney and Lacey's Martin Cove, a Vietnam vet and all-around super classy guy who encourages cheating, bullying, and the intimidation and assault of teenagers and pensioners. <laughs> and together these people make Daniel's life, well, pretty much a living hell. Unsurprising then, that Daniel is soon pleading with his mother to return to New Jersey and bemoaning his pain-filled existence. To the rescue comes the enigmatic Mr Miyagi, Noroyuki Patmorita, best known at that point as Arnold in Happy Days, but destined from this point on to be forever remembered for the karate kid. Miyagi, a Japanese immigrant who earned the Medal of Honour in the US Army, is now the maintenance man at the LaRusso's apartment complex, and he takes on the extra duty of maintaining Daniel's life and functioning body. He arranges a ceasefire with Kreese, in which the Cobra Kai thugs agree to leave Daniel's son in peace to allow him to train for the All-Valley Karate Championship, and then beat him up there instead. Karate expert Miyagi then begins to train Daniel using unorthodox, almost certainly useless in the real world, amusing techniques like the now famous wax on, wax off. In true underdog story style, Daniel survives to claim victory. While much of the karate kid is structurally, if not cliched, then at least well-worn, the fact that it's held by Rocky's award-winning director, John G. Avildsen, gives it more polish than many similar stories, and Avildsen even manages to inject a fair bit of humour and fun into the training montages though there's not much that he, or Macchio, can do to stop the pivotal crane kick looking awkward and silly. <laughs> JCVD performing a roundhouse kick, this is not. <laughs> much of the film rests naturally on Macchio's shoulders, and fortunately he's a pretty engaging screen presence. He has a bit of a smart guy swagger, but it's seen early on that it's all surface and that underneath he's a vulnerable, scared, and a pretty regular and a decent guy and Macho manages to transition well. Daniel's relationship with his mum also works well, seen from the very beginning in a cross-country road trip montage that's probably unnecessary, but sets up the mother-son relationship as warm and healthy. No angsty teenage jackass here. And again, Macho's performance is key to this working. The crux of the movie, though, is, of course, Pat Morita, and Mr Miyagi is perhaps one of the most memorable characters from my childhood. As an adult, I have my concerns about the veracity of the speech patterns and the less than perfect English, but <laughs> while Marita was an American, his parents were Japanese immigrants, so until I know better, I'll accept <laughs> that he was using his own experience to inform his portrayal. I still find him entertaining to watch, and the few moments where he's allowed to display some emotion actually work for me, despite them having a definite possibility of being cheesy. And the small snippets of information gleaned about his past as well as the chemistry between Macho and Marita, quickly dispel any disquiet about why this man should want to spend so much time with a teenager. So, to sum up, I guess, I'm pleased to discover that I still find the Karate Kid largely enjoyable. So, chalk one up for stands up to viewing as an adult, for me at least. 
Yeah, um, I agree. I was actually a little surprised because I thought this might have been a bit too hackneyed to come back to, but it really does stand up pretty well. I just think, uh, as you say, Pat and Rita's fantastic in it, which helps a lot. And mm. I think I think what stuck out on this viewing, apart from it having one of the hardest outs in <laughs> in cinema history, it's like, like, <laughs> like, hey, you've won, yay, credits. It's, it's like, <laughs> there's not many films other than that, apart from that one that was on Best of the Worst a while back. <laughs> oh, yeah. the... The one with the guy firing the rocket. Yes, that one. <laughs> Mark Collins turned himself in. What? That's the end. <laughs> yes, and this, this one's almost as sudden and abrupt. Um, but yeah, blood deaths. Blood deaths. It's important I remember these things. So you know me. <laughs> well, I think what did stick out on this review was how good um, Ralph Macchio is, uh, mm. which I didn't necessarily remember, but uh, his performance really does help uh, help help a lot because some films will go on later where. It's almost like they've taken Macho's character and split him out into about four to five different people, and that's been not worked at all. Whereas this guy feels like a properly rounded human being, and uh, you know he's got a bit of attitude, but yeah, he's he's also vulnerable and human and, and all that as well. So it it does make it feel like he's a a properly rounded character who can uh, who can stand up to these things. And I think sometimes that kind of gets lost in the shuffle in some uh, in certainly more contemporary films. Yes, I, I would. I, I just enjoyed all of it. If you, the view from space, I suppose, would be that it's a fairly standard sporting underdog story, and um, the Rocky Bloodline kind of runs through it in that regard. But it still works. It's a, a, a story archetype that's come back to time and time again because it's hard to screw it up, and <laughs> this works really well. And when you've got so sympathetic characters and trainers and teachers as you have in this one, and it's just a really well put together film. And yeah, I would absolutely agree that it does stand up um, much better than I remember any of the sequels. Then. <laughs> <laughs> um, but would uh, maybe not fair. I've not seen those recently, but I certainly don't want to. Um, but uh, yeah, the Cry Kids actually was a very enjoyable uh, rewatch, and uh, I would heartily recommend it to anyone who somehow has not seen it already. Yeah, absolutely. Again, it's, this one definitely works for me as an adult. Mm-hmm. I had seen it sometime within the last decade, I think. So mm-hmm. kind of new going in that I, I still liked it. I think this really goes solid into like a proper family film. It's Definitely not aimed younger, like some of the films we'll come to. Yeah. And, yeah, it's, it's the key is Marita and Macho, and they, they work really well together. They're really entertaining. And it's something that you could see, the tone's a little different, the cards are a little simpler, but going forward a couple of years to My Cousin Vinny as well, mm-hmm. that Macho does have that kind of, like he's trying to be kind of cooler and older and wise, more street wise than he actually is, but yeah. you kind of see through it, and it, he does. He plays that really well, so it it would be quite an easy role to just play like an absolute ass hat. Yeah, you know, really just kind of so I get, but no, he just plays it mm-hmm. just pitches it just nicely, and it's like yeah, okay, he's, he's actually this kid's trying to like be smarter, or tougher, or whatever than he actually is. But he's actually not like yeah. a decent guy who just was uh, quite like the people not to be. Trying to kill him, you know. <laughs> yeah, and I think crucially, he's also quite self-aware about what the attitude he's putting on as well. Because yeah, at some point, see, when he gets called out, and it, he kind of goes, "Yep, yep absolutely, yes. <laughs> you got me," and uh, that that kind of helps uh, helps with him as well. Yeah, I mean, I guess the only real downside that I would pick about it, beyond perhaps it, it seems maybe stretching credulity, well. Two things stretch credulity a little. One <laughs> is the fact that he's training for this championship within two months. Yeah. <laughs> they could have just shifted it to the end of the school year and it would have been a problem and they would have yeah. given him an extra six months to work on. But uh, is that John Kreese is such a thug. It's like, yeah. yeah, why does he want kids to beat up pensioners? That, that's odd. But now, the other thing is that we've said it before, I'm sure we'll see it again. And the 80s were probably a particularly bad time for this. Elizabeth Shue, and to a lesser degree, Daniel's mother, although she, she doesn't need to be a particularly big character in a bit. Elizabeth, she doesn't get an awful lot to do. No. no. Um, a couple of funny lines, and she's like, she's at least served with the, like, the quick thinking of being the interpreter at the end. Um, yeah. So she, she can come in with Daniel and Mr. Miyagi. So, like, they give her some sort of ability, like, quick thinking ability. But throughout the film, for the most part, she's not got an awful lot to do. Um mm-hmm. So it's certainly a valid criticism, but it's hardly unique for this era in particular. Yes, um, it's actually inspired me to go and dig out Cobra Kai, the uh, YouTube, I think, I guess it is, series, which I'd 
just discounted as obviously being going to be nonsense, but uh, <laughs> it, it seems like this would work. I mean, I, I think we all need to work out which is the most enduring uh, piece of life lesson. Is it wax on, wax off, or is it sweep the leg? We need to find <laughs> out who wins in the long term, so I may give that a look at some point. Um, certainly. It's an appealing start that this is actually still a thoroughly enjoyable film, and really, uh, if anybody's looking to show this to their kids, that there, there's nothing, I mean, there's, sort of like, there's the threat of the bullies and stuff, but it's still, it's still pretty wholesome without being kind of corny or cheesy or too sentimental or anything like that. But yeah. bits of fun, entertaining, um, and it's very much not the Jackie Chan version. 